In Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion, you take the role of an amnesiac octoling waking up in a subway station on the ocean floor. The bottom of the ocean is a dark, scary place where reality may not conform to your expectations. If you don't want to spend the rest of your life down here, there's just one promise of freedom. This facility runs through 80 single-player challenge maps designed to test the most hardened Splatoon veterans of their skills. Brave these challenges, find the four things hidden within, and the promised land will be within your reach. And don't tell anyone anyone I told you this, but I heard rumor the promised land is good old Inkopolis, allowing you to finally play as an Octoling in multiplayer matches. It's been a long time coming. Ever since the Splatoon blog posted Octoling concept art without their masks, I thought an update was coming within the next month. But this DLC isn't just a character pack. The original campaigns for both Splatoon 1 and 2 had some of their own interesting ideas and awesome moments, but were ultimately just a tutorial for the multiplayer. But Octo Expansion Octo Expansion is the full realization of Splatoon as a standalone single player experience. Rather than having you traverse through a sequence of linear platforming levels found within a small hub world, Octo Expansion mixes highly focused challenge maps with an open ended map screen that gives off an old school arcadey feel. Players can move from a completed challenge to any adjacent challenge, exploring in whatever direction they choose. You could speedrun and search for the four things as fast as possible while playing as little of the game as possible just to unlock the Octo. Lings, or you can savor the experience and methodically complete every single challenge you see. Which direction you go in is up to you, but they'll all eventually loop around to send you through the entire board. There's even a bit of player choice within individual challenges in the form of selectable weapons. Harder weapons offer a larger reward, and if you're an ultimate completionist, don't worry. There's only a max of three weapons this time. I uh, think they realized the world would be having a dangerous oversupply of salt if they made you beat girl power eight eight times. Like I said before, these challenges have been designed to give Splatoon veterans some real single-player content to chew on. Up till now, we've been fighting the Octarians in very easy mode. This expansion cranks it up to hard. If you aren't totally competent in your ability to splat with the best of them, this might be a little more than you can handle. The GameFAQs boards are absolutely drenched in salt, and it is delicious. If you've been hoping for some real challenge ever since Splatoon 1's original launch on the Wii U, this is a great way to satisfy the craving. But the difficulty level means nothing if you're not doing something worth doing. The challenges themselves are a giant grab bag of old ideas given new paint, plus some completely new ideas. A handful of the challenges are simply new platforming levels, but most focus on using a specific mechanic. Most of these mechanics return from the main game, but they've all been recontextualized to fully realize what they're capable of. Loved the bounce pads? Get ready for a hectic firefight across the toughest bounce pad course you've yet seen. The jetpack and baller specials? Previously absent from single player, both specials now have their own dedicated obstacle courses to tackle, plus a few other surprises. The limited ink challenges from Splatoon 1's amiibo make a return too, but rather than just having limited ink through a normal level, they take advantage of the lack of ink to make puzzle levels designed to make you figure out how to fire as little as possible. Even multiplayer itself has been given a single player coat of paint, with levels asking you to play ranked matches against an army of Octoling opponents. On top of that are totally new mechanics, in particular the infamous Magic 8-Ball. Yeah, that's right, they have finally done it. Splatoon Mini Golf. You want me to love a game? Put in Mini Golf. This thing hits every check mark on my list. I actually got some major Majora's Mask vibes out of the whole thing. A game built on the assets of a prior one, recontextualizing those assets in totally new ways, creating a unique experience experience separate from its original building box and hiding the reuse of those assets by giving them a darker, more surreal coat of paint. I've got to point out the effort they put into giving this expansion its own aesthetic. They nailed the isolated, otherworldly vibe that comes with being in a deep ocean trench, mixed in with a bit of a retro vibe with the neon lighting and uh, some cameos that are a little less subtle than they probably could have managed. And it's all to the beats of new music exclusive to this campaign, which all takes on a tone to match the atmosphere and is just as fresh as you'd hope for. And it's not just a darker aesthetic, the plot gets a bit more intense too. This campaign comes with a fully fleshed out story from beginning to end, following your Octoling and your very own Codex support team consisting of Captain Cuttlefish, plus Pearl and Marina, AKA Off the Hook. Up till now, you've only been able to get vaguely acquainted with Off the Hook through the news show 
when you boot up the game, but here you get to meet them in their natural habitat, exchanging witty banter away from the prying eyes of national TV, finally getting a clear picture of their backstory and relationship with each other. It's basically the reverse of Splatoon 1. Back there, you met the Squid Sisters immediately in the campaign, then you have that context for who they really were for the rest of the game's lifespan. With Splatoon 2, we've been vaguely aware of Off the Hook from their television appearances and only now get to meet them in person. Off the Hook are the true main characters of this expansion, and by the end of it, you'll feel a bond that's gonna make future Slapfests a lot more personal. There are plenty of twists along the way, along with a deeper dive into the Splatoon lore than you might expect. And without spoiling it, the climax does not disappoint, especially for longtime fans who spent the time to get invested. Octolings and multiplayer are the lowest tier reward for reaching the end of this thing. The one thing I most want to stress, Octo Expansion is firing on all cylinders. Every single one of these challenges is a new, fresh experience that brings out the full potential of mechanics that previously existed, recontextualizes them in fun new ways, or brings a completely new idea to the table altogether. There are no dull moments, no wasted time. Octo Expansion flawlessly executes exactly what it sets out to do, and spends the whole game doing it, all the way from the very first second to 100% completion. And trust me, you are going to want to go for 100%, even if you don't think you're ready for it. Just do it. I give Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion a score of 8 out of 8. If you're not playing it right now, we can never be friends. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including Andrew Seibert, Mrs. Seckman, Eric Flynn, Les Lamb, R.B. Drock, Hyper Scrub Zio, Zolino, Mr. Harry Wonka, Alexander Botkin, Kay Gordon, Chris Nate, Mason 2K, Anyu, Salieri, Anorak, Ross Clark, Ikarira, JD, Jez, Robert B. Brachier, Game Champ 3000 Sucks, Citrus Lush, Zaina Bane, Cool Monkey 666, King Tom Nook, BCR Main Sound, JJ McKnight, Vincent Hall, Bass Singer 313, Meta 64, and Game Champ 3000 sucks sucks. Let me know how much this video sucks and how I can improve in the comments below. In general, these reviews are always the videos like I'm the most afraid are gonna end up a terrible mess. So please, construct some criticism. And of course, let me know what you thought of Octo Expansion itself, particularly if you feel it was consistently awesome every second of the way like I did. There are so few games that manage to be interesting literally every second, so I want to know if I was the only one. Taco Yoroshiku for watching, and Get out of my house!